everyone, it's Becca, and welcome back to another episode of Geeking Out. Now, if you live in the United States, you marked the other day as Groundhog Day. Yes, not the Bill Murray film, but I'm talking about the day when all of us forego our actual sensibilities about meteorological predictions and turn everything over to a large furry rodent. Unfortunately, this year, Puxatani Phil saw his shadow, which means we have six more weeks of winter. Not that it matters for me here in California, but for all of you out there who actually live somewhere with weather patterns, I had a few things in mind for you. Why not curl up on your couch with a lovely LGBT themed movie streamed to you directly by Netflix? And before any of you say that that is an entirely terrible category on Netflix, and I know most of it is basically just softcore porn, I've got six amazing standout LGBT films available for streaming right now on Netflix that all of you should go enjoy. First up is Stranger by the Lake. Now this is a 2013 French drama thriller whose director, I'm gonna screw this up, Alain Girardi, one best director at Cannes for this entry. Like I said, it's a drama thriller focusing on our protagonist, Franck, who has frequented a popular gay cruising spot on this beautiful, pristine lake uh, for several summers there, and this summer meets two people who were changed the course of his life. One, Henri, who quickly becomes a platonic friend of his and helps him sort of figure out the dastardly goings-ons that are happening here at the lake, and the other is Michel. Michel is a suave, dark-haired fellow with whom Franck falls head over heels in lust with, and the two of them have this torrid affair on the edge of this lake, and then we find out that Michelle is actually a murderer and has drowned several people in the lake that summer. Men he's been having flings with and it becomes this sort of will they, won't they, how exactly far will Frank go? It's that whole story of the kind of torrid edge of where will you, what will you do for lust and exactly what will you do uh, for what you perceive as love in a moment. But it is a fantastic, very smart and cerebral work that is beautifully shot. Lots of these sort of just great landscapes of this lake scene that they're all set against. So number two is the 2012 documentary by David France called How to Survive a Plague. Now How to Survive a Plague is best described as a story of AIDS from the beginning. David France has been a longtime journalist uh, who has been covering the AIDS epidemic since before really any mainstream media was covering it and well before the US government had ever acknowledged that we had an epidemic here in this country. And France focuses on two groups with his work. Uh, Act Up and Tag, who were some of the first boots on the ground, day-to-day, -day, full tides AIDS activists. And France went to them, went to their families, went to these collections that have collected these works and these incredibly raw interviews and you know boots on the ground footage, shaky handy cam, everything, to give you the best picture of exactly what it was like in the late 80s. Uh, and it is something that we really don't get taught too well in schools. So so yes, not the most uplifting of subjects, but an incredibly riveting and incredibly motivating uh, look at sort of how people can be the change and how people can go so far as to get the FDA and the NIH to actually do something about an epidemic that they were willing to just sort of try and sweep under the rug. Number three is a decidedly lighter film, this time a romantic comedy out of Sweden uh, entitled Kiss Me. And the best way to describe this is that it is the 2011 sweetest version of the 2004 English film Imagine me and you. We have Mia, who is a young Swedish up-and-coming architect who is about to marry her business partner, a longtime lover and fiance, Thomas, but her father is getting remarried to a woman named Elizabeth, and she goes to her father and Elizabeth's engagement party where she meets Elizabeth's adult daughter, Frida, who is fantastic and funny and witty and beautiful and very, very much a lesbian. They end up sleeping together. It's the, I'm not sure how I'm gonna manage this, and, I, you know, no spoiler that it has a happy ending, because like Imagine Me and You, it is one of the few lesbian films on, on all of Netflix that doesn't end with somebody just sleeping with their teacher and having their life ruined. Number four on this list is called Free Fall, another one of those, the blah 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 version of blah 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 movie, and this is instead the 2013 German version of Brokeback Mountain. Instead of cowboys we are in the world, the German elite riot police. Mark, our protagonist, is a young, accomplished police officer who is engaged, he has a child on the way, and is working to become a member of this elite squad. His training partner, Kay, and him have a very antagonistic relationship at the beginning of the film and eventually their relationship becomes sexual. Mark's whole story then becomes this sort of struggle between his domestic life with his fiance and the kid coming and his cop life and the sexual affair that he's having with Kay that's becoming harder and harder for him to keep under wraps. It's a pretty predictable plot. Like I said, if you've seen Brokeback Mountain, you kind of know how this is gonna end up, which is not that great. A eh, little bit of a downer, but still watch a good watch. Fifth on my list is the seminal 1990 documentary, Paris is Burning. And if you haven't seen this, honestly, just pause this video right now, go to Netflix, look it up, watch it, and then come back and we can talk. Okay, I'm not gonna do that to you. I understand that a lot of people are watching this video to get recommendations for stuff they haven't seen. It is uh, as much 
of a sort of primer into a way of life that has really, uh, you know, been drastically changed since the 1980s. It is a character study, it is a fly on the wall picture of the golden age of the New York City drag ball scene, um, which was this subculture of dance and high fashion and houses and chosen family, uh, predominantly populated by African American and Latino young men, most of whom are gay, many of whom were also transgender, that is unlike anything else you've ever seen. It is where we get voguing from, it is where we get terms like shade and realness and reading people. It is this world of intense personal pride and intense personal style. Go watch Paris is Burning. Everybody who is in this film is a member of this drag ball circuit. It is so many beautiful house mothers from the house of Ninja and the house of Extravaganza who are telling the story of the 1980s drag ball scene in their own world. Um, yeah. Paris is burning. Number six, last but certainly not least, is Vic and Flo Saw Bear. This is the 2013 French language Canadian drama uh, about a pair of lesbian lovers who are ex-cons who are finally now in their 40s and 60s respectively settling into a life of domesticity. They settle into a, a small cabin on the edge of the woods outside of Quebec and attempt to become domestic people. Uh, but naturally things don't go as it's planned. We're on the edge of the woods, it's sort of this idea of this creeping darkness that can come out of it. It's dark, it's twisted, it's menacing, there's a sense of overwhelming dread kind of everywhere where you watch the movie, um, but not necessarily in the way that you would think of, and then they all die and the lesbians are sad. No, it really is kind of trying to put a picture of what happens when two lifelong criminals attempt to be domestics. All right, folks, there you have it. We have six more weeks of winter, and I gave you six great LGBT films available for streaming right now on Netflix that I think all of you should go watch. Leave me comments down below about any other movies that are good on Netflix that I might have missed. Also, let's talk about these movies in the comments or on my Tumblr or on my Twitter or other places that you might find me, maybe my own personal channel. In the meantime, go and check out Geek and Sundry Vlogs for all the good stuff from the other vloggers. The main channel over on Geek and Sundry, we got some new shiny stuff happening over there, and I will see you all in two weeks.